Welcome everyone to Believers Family Worship Center Midweek Live. I am Pastor Karen Jones and I will be breaking the bread of life with you on tonight. Now before we get started, do me a favor, go ahead and like, go ahead and share, go ahead and let, let somebody know that Believers Family Worship Center's Midweek Live is on right now. We're going to be getting into, into a very fascinating topic that I love. I really love the study of the word and I want you to enjoy it with me on tonight as well. Before we go any further, let's have a word of prayer and then we're going to get started we have a word from the Lord for you so please go ahead and like go ahead and share go ahead and subscribe remember if you are on YouTube live you can oh, go ahead and subscribe if you're on Facebook go ahead and like and share any of those social media platforms Heavenly Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you so much for your goodness, your mercy, and your kindness. We thank you, dear God, that you have given us your word of life to change us, to challenge us. Father God, to give us a hope for the future. Father, we pray tonight that everyone who is listening to this word, Father God, would not just hear it, but God, we would eat of this word and that we would manifest what it is that you are imparting on unto us tonight. So, Father, right now the name of Jesus we give you the right of way we yield to you now we thank you dear God that no weapon formed against us shall prosper tonight and we thank you Lord God that you are our great and our marvelous God and we give all praise and honor to you in Jesus name we pray and we say amen and amen now before we get started we want to give a good shout out and a blessing to our overseer Bishop Jeffrey Archangel and our senior pastor senior pastor and I want what I like to call a master prayer prophet Sandy Archangel. We thank them for the opportunity for standing behind the sacred desk as we impart and break the word of God. So tonight what we're going to be uh, teaching on for a few minutes is the prophetic power of the joy of the Lord. The prophetic power of the joy of the Lord. So if you have your iPad, your phone, or your Bible, what have you, you can go ahead and turn right now to Nehemiah the 8th chapter. But we're not going to get right in that scripture yet. We're going to build something up first. Uh, but first, remember, we're talking about the prophetic power of the joy of the Lord. The prophetic power of the joy of the Lord. Now, don't get nervous when you see me flipping my papers and wondering how long I'm going to be, okay? Don't do that. We are going to be really delving in some good stuff. Now, let's start right here. When we talk about the prophetic power of the joy of the Lord, one thing, if you've ever received a word from God, if you've ever been reading your Bible and you high and something, a scripture jumped off the page at you, that's called a rhema. You, you're reading the logos, which is the written word of God, but then something jumps off the page like it's high lit to you you it's like it like it's just glaring you and you take that scripture and say oh my god I needed to hear that that's called a rhema so you have that logos and you have that rhema combining and you get a word from God from that way or you might have had a prophet talk to you or give you a word from God or you might have had someone with a prophetic anointing that went ahead and prophesied to you or gave you a word of knowledge or a gift of prophecy or what have you I'm not talking about right now particularly somebody just uh, encouraging you I'm not particularly talking about, oh, they're, you know, comforting you and you might be going through a tough time. What I'm talking about is when you have received a word from the Lord and you receive that word, that prophetic word, that prophetic promise uh, could have been on any subject, could have been that uh, the Lord's showing you that, you know, your husband is right there or are you about to walk into a season of wealth or, or that prophetic word uh, might be that something about your job or employment or whatever it is, might be a marriage might be the job might be anything whatever that prophetic promise is we receive it lots of times with a whole lot of gladness a whole lot of joy we're like oh my god yes yes I've got this word but what begins to happen that word has to walk itself out and after a while the joy that we first had in the beginning of receiving that word it begins to uh, wane it begins to go down a bit before long we're in the middle of that process and we're wondering if what God told us is ever going to come to pass, 
I don't know if you've been like that, but I know I have been to that point where, you know, God has promised you something. You have a word from God on it, but all of a sudden it's almost like you're in the middle of a desert and you do not see the end of that desert. You're looking for an oasis and you're wondering what in the world is going on. It's totally opposite from what was told to you. And so the prophetic uh, power of the joy of the Lord is actually something that is very interesting, but we must first break down what is joy now joy you know when you look at the word joy and joyous and happiness and cheerfulness and being glad that occurs in the bible over 365 times which lets us know that every day god has a scripture for us in 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 in, in the means of being a joy for joyful uh, or being glad or taking pleasure or taking delight or being cheerful. Do you know God wants us to be cheerful and to be glad every single day? And there's a scripture you can back up every single day with something pertaining to joy. That's how much nobody likes to be around people who just talk negative all the time. Nobody wants to be in, to hear all the time the problems and nobody wants to hear all the time. You know, you know, yeah, and, and, and you know, we those of us who have been in the way a long time, we know how to fix that. We can say, oh, my, you know, God is so good. And we start with the goodness of God and we believe in God and I'm blessed. And then all of a sudden we give a litany of all the 10 things that's going wrong in our lives. And I'm not saying that there is not a time for venting. There is a time for venting. There is a time for sharing, you know, what it is you're going through. But there is also something where we have to choose whether we're going to be happy or choose whether we're going to be joyful, choose on whether we want to be glad. So uh, there is. Is a, a definition of joy that comes from compassion.com and it says true joy is limitless life defining transformative reservoir waiting to be it's a reservoir waiting to be tapped into it requires the utmost surrender and like love it's a choice that has to be made joy has got to be a choice that we are to make absolutely every day now there is a difference between happiness and joy i know you may know it or you may not know it when it comes to happiness that's feeling or showing pleasure and contentment it's happiness is having a sense of confidence or having a sense of satisfaction uh, about a person or an arrangement or a situation joy is happiness on steroids joy takes happiness to another level Joy is when you are filled with a lot of happiness. Now, the Strong's Concordance, when we get into the Hebrew and the Greek, and I'm going to combine the defi definitions of both for the word joy, uh, it, it means mirth, it means gladness, it means gaiety, it means pleasure. It means you got a glad result and you're absolutely happy. It means a happy issue. It means to rejoice. It means to make glad. It means to leap. It means to be thriving. It means to be cheerful. And God's like, you know, you, know some, you, you have that phrase that says, you know, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. That means that, you know, uh, you just woke up and you just wasn't in a good mood. But the Bible way of joy says, you know what? You can have a happy result. You can have that day start and you can display joy despite of how you woke up in the morning. And we're going to go into certain and certain ways on how to do that. Uh, you know, one of, I, I will never, ever, ever forget this. There was a time my husband and I, this place is closed. Uh, it, we were shopping for some uh, plants. Not, not not the plants, the containers for plants and some vases. And we, we would always go to this place. And like I said, the place is now closed. But there were lots of pots in there, pottery works and iron cast iron works and all of that. And we had been in there like a good 45 minutes. And it was in a huge warehouse that did not have air condition. And, of course, it was in the late spring. So it was kind of warm. But we didn't even bother about that part. And here we are. We had brought some items to check out. But then I just felt, let me walk around in the store and take another last look to see uh, if there's anything else I could get. And y'all, when I went to this pot, which I did purchase the pot, but I looked down in the pot, and I kid you not, it looked like money. And I'm not talking about coins. I was like, what, what is this? And I looked down in the pot, and it was some money that was wrapped up. Now, you might say, OMG. And I was like, oh God, what you know, what what we should do? My husband said, let's buy this pot. 
We bought the pot. We bought the pot and got everything else. We just didn't pay attention to it. When we got back to the car and got it in the car, we were like, oh, okay. You know, we wasn't digging in the store. We just said, I don't know what this is. Y'all, over $200 was wrapped up. And in that, you want to talk about leap for joy. You want to talk about screaming. That's what I did because at that very same time, I had been believing God for something. And that money was the exact amount of money that I needed. And I'm like, that's talking about, I'm talking about joy. Now, uh, that's just one example. I can give you a bunch more, but that's it. Now, there is, you can experience joy, joy in your body. You can have joy in your soul, and you can have joy in your spirit. The way the body experiences joy is through satisfaction. It's by what you taste. It's by uh, uh, giving the body what it needs, like clothes and cars and body care. Whenever the body um, it, uh, whenever the body is catered to or your flesh is catered to, it experiences a certain satisfaction and joy explodes out of you. So it's that type of joy. You have anything that satisfies, I'm going to just be frank with you, there's sex, there is drug, you know, on the opposite end of that, there's drugs and alcoholism, things that people do to try and get that happiness or to get that high, to have that joy. That is the part of joy that of, of the body. Then you have the joy of the soul. And the joy of the soul that the soul houses your imagination, your emotions, all of those things, your reasoning, your memories, all of that. Your soul meters joy this way through what makes it happy. Okay? Your body is whatever it caters to, whatever it caters to. I love bananas fast as cheesecake. When I eat that bananas fast as cheesecake, give me a good New Orleans bananas fast as cheesecake that has pecans in it and that taste explodes in my mouth. Oh, my God. My body is satisfied. My soul can be satisfied with that same bananas, uh, a, a Foster's cheesecake, without it even being in front of me. How does it do to do that? My memories go back to how it felt when I tasted it. I get happy again. I can feel that same exhilaration. Why? Because the soul meters joy this way through the medium of happiness. Now, the spirit, especially when you're a spirit, I'm talking about now the joy of the spirit, a born-again spirit, when you're saved, you're your spirit automatically has a fruit of the spirit which is called joy and whenever you hear the word of God or whenever you're in worship or whenever you're in prayer or whenever you're, you're in the presence of God you hit what I call a sweet spot or you get that time when you just feel the touch of God and joy floods your soul it it also it you begin to leap for joy you know you could be talking with a friend and you're talking about the word and you're talking about a testimony of what God did and all of a sudden the joy the Lord just comes in you and you just begin to be all happy that is called the joy of the spirit you know when Elizabeth heard heard Mary's voice and she was expecting John and and Mary was expecting Jesus when Mary when when she heard Mary's voice the baby John in her womb leaped with joy why because that was a spirit's connecting that is the joy of the spirit so the joy of the body comes from satisfaction you, whatever you can satisfy it with, the joy of the soul comes in with happiness. You know, that is why you got to watch the joy of the soul because, you know, people try and fill it with the latest thing. You know, the latest cars, the latest purses. They try and fill that happiness void, you know, to try and get the, the power by association. All of those things are meted by the joy of the soul. But then the joy of the spirit is what the connecting point when you get that honey bucket rolling. Now, there is another dimension that actually what we're going to speed through and talk about, and it is the prophetic power of the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is nothing like the joy of the body, the joy of the soul, or the joy of the spirit. The joy of the Lord doesn't look like ours because it's his joy. His ways are higher than our ways, and his thoughts are, are not our thoughts. It's his own brand of joy that pleases him. It is not what pleases us. The higher, it is a higher level of joy than what we can imagine. And what pleases God, and I'm going to quickly go through these on what pleases God. Number one, what pleases God is our faith. That's Hebrews 11.6. Number two, 
what pleases God is our prosperity pleases him. According to Psalm 35 and 27, he takes pleasure in our prosperity. In our complete word prosperity is not just wealth and money. It means he takes pleasure in our health, our soundness of mind. He takes pleasure in our being complete. He takes pleasure in our safety and our friendship with other people and himself. That's number two. Number three. Uh, uh, God's kind of joy and pleasure is our being in his presence. That's Psalm 16 and 11. And then when a sinner repents, that's number four, Luke 15 and 10. If the angels rejoice when a sinner repents, well, guess what they do? They do what they see the father do, what the creator do. So the creator is also shouting for joy because a child has come on. So that's number four. When a sinner repents, God is a Ecstatically, Father is ecstatically happy and full with joy. Then number five, God takes pleasure in his son Jesus. And you can read about that in Colossians 1.19, that all of his pleasure and all of his fullness is in Jesus. And then, and then the next one, number six, God has pleasure and joy seeing his children grow in holiness as he works in our hearts to make him more like him. That's a mouthful, so I'm going to say it again. Philippians 2.13, God takes pleasure and God takes joy. Check it out. When he sees us growing in holiness, we don't talk about holiness a lot, but we need to. He takes uh, joy in seeing us growing in holiness and he works in our hearts to make us more like him and then the last one uh the father uh no take that back got two more one and then the last one the next one is the father takes great pleasure and joy in caring for us and in protecting us that's Zephaniah 317 the father takes pleasure and joy in caring for us and protecting us that's Zephaniah 317 I know I'm going fast so go back and watch it uh, and then the very last one is where are we going to take the meat of the prophetic power of the joy of the Lord? Do you know in Isaiah 53 and 10, there's a scripture that says that it pleased God to bruise Jesus. That it pleased him to allow Jesus to be put on the cross, to suffer for it. Ple that were, Look it up. Isaiah 53 and 10. God took pleasure. And now you might say, how in the world could anybody take pleasure in seeing their son die, seeing their son suffer, seeing their son grieve? I just told you that the God's level, God's idea of joy, his, his is different than what ours is. Because when we talk about the, uh, God's joy, he took pleasure in bruising Jesus by putting him through grief, putting him through sorrow, allowing the sacrifice to come through so it will result in the redemption of mankind. Remember, God's joy it was, is what pleases him, not us. When we look at God's joy, we think it's like, whoo, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. But God's joy will look like pain that he allows us to go through. God's joy takes pleasure when we are walking through trials. God takes pleasure when we are, uh, when God allows something to occur in our life that we thought should never have happened. Because whether we like to believe this or not, we have a tendency, you see the formula is, I'm supposed to take God's promise, I'm supposed to pray, I'm supposed to do this, I'm supposed to do that, and then I'm going to get the I'm going to get the result and I'm going to get it quickly. But when time begins to pass and we don't see that thing coming to pass and we're wondering what's going on, God is taking pleasure, check it out, in our wait. He's taking pleasure in that, in that time frame that he says, okay, let's see. Let's see, let's see, I'm taking pleasure. Why? Because he knows the end result that he has. You know, uh, it was, it's like this in Hebrews 12 and 2, he says, Jesus, dis he endured the cross. He despised the shame that his father took pleasure in. Why? Because there was joy that was set before him. The prophetic power of joy is that you and I go through things that we do not understand. We go through situations. Why? Because there is a joy that is set before us that is prophesying to us that there is a result that's not just going to be for you I'm taking you out of it but it's going to be a blessing to weigh more than what you can ever think or imagine the 
joy of the Lord in your life may look like sorrow, may look like grief, may look like trials. It's, it's because he allows it because he knows the joy you will experience on the other side of through. So when you get those promises, you have to hold on. There is this prophet that I listened to called uh, Dr. Prophet Louis Elias, and he says this, the church has been taught to trust in God's promises, but not in God's plans. I'm explaining in a minute. The church has been taught to trust in God's promises, but not in God's plans. And what does he mean by that? What he means by that is we can trust in the promise of God that he gives us. But can we really trust the plan and the process that he puts us through? Can we really trust God when he puts us through through a high a low valleys and high mountains? Can we really trust him? You know, we, we have to learn that with God is not just a hop, skip, and jump. He will take us through a journey that we have to trust him. Now, one job of, of that prophetic word that God gives us it is to anchor us it is to hold us down until we become what God promised us when we first received that word so when we read in Nehemiah 8 and 10 and it says then he said to them go your way eat the fat drink the sweet send portions to them for whom nothing is prepared for this day is holy unto our Lord don't be check out what he says neither be ye sorry for the joy of the Lord is your strength Ezra the scribe, Ezra who took the time to, th th they were in captivity in Babylon and they got back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple and this group, they had been there in captivity for nearly 70 years and now they are finding out, they didn't know about Mo they didn't know that they even had five books of the Bible, what we know right now as the, the first five books, the Torah, which is Genesis, you know, Exodus, uh, uh, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They didn't know it. You had a whole new generation that didn't even know God's word. But Ezra the scribe, he, he was a priest. He studied the law, and he began to teach this generation who didn't know anything. And he began, to, and he stood up, and he told them when they heard you got to check it out. They were in captivity. They didn't know that God created the heaven and the earth. Their God. They didn't know how God took the children of Israel out of Egypt, that their people were in captivity before. They didn't know that God had a, a list of regulations and rules that they were supposed to follow. They didn't know it. They didn't know anything about Deuteronomy and, 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 and how they're supposed to be anointed and blessed a thousand times more. They didn't know that the land of Israel was their inheritance and their, their, their were a whole new generation they didn't know so they were crying and weeping and they were in great sorrow they didn't know that the promise that they had years ago but they you know they just didn't know it but when they heard it they began to be sorry and so Ezra said don't be sorry about any of it and he says why because the joy of the Lord is your strength and that word strength don't just mean just mighty power it means strength means your place of safety it means your stronghold your refuge. When God gives us the joy of the Lord, he's given us a place of a stronghold. He's given us a place of protection. He's given us a place, a, a harbor, where we're safe in that harbor. And now standing up, and we're about to close, standing up next to Ezra. Ezra stood at a wooden, a wooden pulpit. Just imagine this as being a wooden pulpit. And he stood up to read the words of the law. And he didn't stand up by himself. On his left hand were six men, and on the right hand were seven men. And each one, the Holy Spirit said to me, "Say, you look under each of those, and we're not going to, I'm just going to choose two from each side to go through. Because what that represents, Ezra represents the logos, the word. But what those men represented, each of their names represented a view of God or a name of God, or a view, or a nature of God, that when we are going through the toughest of our times, if we can see God in that space, then that what happens is he injects into us. That's where his joy comes. But we have to get a view of him that we haven't seen before. And that's why a lot of times in the middle of your process, people quit and people get discouraged because you lose sight of who God is for you in that moment. So I'm just going to choose two, like I said, and then we're going to be winding up. Uh, two that stood on Ezra's left side. Uh, his name was Matithia. And his name means gift of Jehovah. The rhema is the spirit of the Lord is saying uh, to them 
as they read the as Ezra is reading the word, you got a man standing up whose name meant gift of Jehovah. In other words, God is telling us, listen, I'm your gift. I am your gift. I'm a gift to you. Now, when you're going through the ringer, you have to know. You, you know, gifts, we can understand it clearly. We receive gifts for our birthdays. We receive gifts for Christmas. We receive gifts on anniversaries. How do you feel when you open up a gift? Especially it's a gift that you've really been wanting. And it, it fills you with so much joy. God says, open me up. I'm your gift. Open me up. What it is that you you want me to be for you. Get that picture of me as your gift of that, and open me up. And then you begin to say, "Oh my God, yeah, you, you know, I, I, I forgot you did this." Go back in the Bible and see how he was a gift for other people. So God, the gift of Jehovah, and then the other one I'm going to uh, uh, pick up. His name was Anaya, and hit, hit that hit name is Jehovah has answered. You, Jehovah. It's answered. We have to remind ourselves that there's a verse in Genesis 35, 3, and it says, let us arise and go to Bethel. I will make there an altar. And God answered me in the day of my distress. When we're going through, y'all, when we in that place, th th this is for those who think God does, that God won't answer your prayer. But his name means Jehovah has answered. God will answer God will respond to you. God, you know, when you think you're being ignored, this is the one that you hold on to and you say, God, listen, God has answered me. God will answer me. I'm going to keep holding on. And then there were two. And like I said, then there were seven that were on Ezra's right hand. And I'm just going to pick uh, two from that. And one of them that I absolutely love that was standing on Ezra's right hand. Remember, Ezra represents the word, the logos. But those men represent the spirit of God and the nature of God. And the one on, on one, his name was Mishael. Mishael. I didn't even know. I, I, I listened to the, 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 the Hebrew pronunciation a long time to get that. Uh, Mishael. And his name means who is what God is. Who help me. Who is what God is. In other words, his power is unmatched. His strength is unmatched. Who is what God is. So you fill in the blank. Whatever it is. Who can outmatch God? Is there anybody who can outrank God? Is there anybody that can compare to him? There's nobody. That should give you joy. That should flood your soul with joy. That there is nobody who can outmatch God. Who is what God is? You're robbed of joy because you feel you have no power. Or you feel you have little power. This is when you say, oh my God, who is what God is in my life? There's nobody like God. And then there is one that we're going to go and then we're going to, uh, for this one here, we're going to do, I want to, I want to make sure that I, I, I pick that one. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Oh, they, they have so many on that right side, but uh, mm, 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 mm. I'm going to go back to this one. I'm going to go back to this one. I know y'all see I'm loving this. I, somebody needs to hear this one. I wasn't going to do this one, but I feel to do this one. This one means costume, costume. And it means rich, firm in resources, apparently wealthy, capacious. Now, to be capacious, I have to look that word up. I'm like, what does it mean to be capacious? To, capac to have capaciousness means having a lot of space inside. It means roomy. So when you are feeling cramped, when you are feeling stuck, when you are feeling like you're in tight places, when it feels like the finances are not flowing like it should and it has got you a little bit depressed gotten you a little and, and maybe not depressed might be like just wondering is that god you gave me prophetic words i was going to be wealthy you gave me and now it's like it's taking a nose that what's going on this is where you remember the name this name right here well the guy's name was kashum but his name meant rich and it is when you have to continually speak over yourself i am rich I am God make God is going to make room for me in this area. Now you know where this is coming from. This is coming from Genesis 26, 22. And he removed from thence and he digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. I don't know if you're feeling tight in any area. You know, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be 
uh, 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 a tightness in your finances. It could be a tightness in your relationship when things are not just going straight. You know, it's like mm, God can make room. In other words, he'll come in between the tight places. You know, if you ever, sometimes, you know, I, I had a, um, I was drinking something. I couldn't get the top off. It was really, really tight. So I had to go to my husband and I said, can you please unscrew this for me? And he did, he made room. He, he twisted it where it became loose. And I, I just feel God to tell somebody that he is untightening situations and search circumstances in your life. Well, now you're going to feel a, a, a loosening, a, a, a roominess now because things have been really, really tight. But let me tell you something. The tightness can also mean that you're ready to give birth with something because when you are pregnant with a child, remember for both my kids, uh, it gets really, really tight. Now toward the end, it gets really, really tight up in there. And it's like, there's no more room for this baby to go. And when it's tight, when it gets really, really tight, that's an indication that you're about to get a release. And so therefore, when you understand God, I'm standing on your word, your logos, I'm going to pull on what I know to see you at that nature, that every one of these names becomes a prophetic picture, a prophetic power source that you hold on to. And before you know it, God becomes who he promised to be in your life. Do not allow the enemy to rob you of the joy of the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord, remember, it may not look like your joy. It may not feel like your joy. I think too many times in the, in the season in the uh, where we are now, we begin to well, we, begin, we begin to look at I don't feel it, and we have a tendency to judge how our success on how we feel, and God says that's not my kind of joy. The kind of joy that I'm talking about is I will allow certain things to occur in your life because I know. It's not only going to do you good, but you are going to turn around and be the blessing of what you saw me be. So when you saw me be what is God like, then then guess what? You can be the other people. You can be a, a person that reflects that in other people's life. When you are in, when 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 you see God take you out of tight situations, then you can turn around and take other people out of tight situations. That's why it becomes a prophetic power source. Listen, don't allow the enemy to keep bringing you down with situations. Grab hold to joy because joy is going to strengthen you like nothing else will. When you begin to see God move in your life, I'm telling you, when you begin to see God answer, begin. how, how do you begin to start this? Begin to thank God for the little things. Begin to be grateful for the little things. Begin to be grateful and focus on who you know God is. So the prophetic power of the joy of the Lord wants to come into your life, not every other day, wants to do it every day. So we're going to pray right now. You might be in that position. You say, you know what? I have not been happy. I've been fronting. I've just been in that place where I just, I, I just been putting a smile and faking it for everybody because that's what I'm supposed to do. You know, you know, those of us in the kingdom, we know how to put on that, that night, that nice smile that, 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 you know, but we prophetic people, we have eyes to see beyond that sweetheart. You have to understand and know that God wants you not just happy on the outside, but he wants that on the inside, that joy. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, dear God, that right now you are releasing who you are for them at this moment and at this time. I thank you, Lord God, that there are those that are watching tonight, dear God, have been in through, they've been through a lot of things, dear God. And Father, they just, some of them have just lost their smile, Father, because they have been through rough situations, because they've just adopted their situation and just said, I'm just going to live with it. But God, I thank you, dear God, that you have the kind of joy that can override their own that oh my god you have the kind of joy that will override natural instincts and just say here lean on my joy lean on my take pleasure in me it's the kind of joy that will take pleasure in god until he, and he rides with you and oh my god he will ride with you in the middle of your storm he will be with you and you part just like you can partake of his faith 
partake of his joy. So, Father, I ask you to release your joy, that the Spirit of the Holy Spirit would dispense the joy of the Lord, your kind of joy that may not make sense, the kind of joy that may not make sense, but will be worthwhile in the end. Father, heal emotions, heal hearts. Father, God, for the way where they've been hard on themselves, Father, God, release your mercy that they will have a lightness and a refreshing of spirit, oh God. Let them know, Father God, that you are a wonderful God. And Father, they don't need to be sorry. All they have to do is trust in the joy of the Lord that will bring them to their place of safety and that will bring strength into their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we say amen and amen. Now, there may be some of you that's been watching and you've been saying, you know what? I've been watching y'all. Remember, your first time watching us might have been watching us a lot. And you might say, you know what? I really need to get Jesus into my life. I want to rekindle that relationship with him. Well, then listen, all you have to do, very simple, admit that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus, that God raised Jesus from the dead. And see, confess that Jesus is your Lord. And that's it. And you become a part of the kingdom of God. And he loves you so much. Because you know what? You can have fake joy. And what I mean by that is you can try all the things in your body, the joy in your body. You can try getting high, but that's going to last just temporary, you know. You can keep doing this and try and show people that the joy of the soul, you know. You can keep trying to do that where, you know, you know, you're showing people the latest things of what you got or what you don't have, you know. that Or you could be just content with that, your happiness. But don't let happiness be the end result. There, there's more to you. And you might have the joy. I'm just, I'm, I'm just good with the joy of the spirit. Even that is connected to when, you know, you, 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 you're with other things or with other people. And you get the joy, you know, just being in God's presence. And that is wonderful. But what I'm telling you is there's the joy of the Lord that says no matter what's going on, be, be joyous because I am your God. And if you want that God, all you just repeat after me and say, Father God, I admit that I am a sinner. I admit that I need you. So I ask you, Father, to forgive me of all of my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and that God, you raised Jesus from the dead. And because I believe that, I confess Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my Lord. I receive the gift of salvation and I thank you that you are able to satisfy me to the uttermost. Jesus name. Amen. You are now a part of the kingdom of God and those angels that we were talking about that were saying how they get so rejoicing and God all of heaven is rejoicing because you have decided to you know what you decided to do? You decided to come on home. You decided to come on home. What I want you to do, though, is go to www.believersfamily.org. Go to the contact part, fill it out, and let us know that you accepted Jesus into your life. We want to keep in contact with you. If you do not have a church home and you've been watching every now and then, you can go to www.believersfamily.org and say, you know what? I live away or far away from y'all, but I want to be a member. Tell, tell them you want to be an online member, and then we'll get you set up with that as well. And we just want to thank you for watching with us. So uh, I hope you uh, shared that love that word tonight I loved it because I love the study of God's word and so right now we're just going to let you know that God takes pleasure in our prosperity remember God is a gift and he that means he has offerings that he gives of himself but and because we're like him we want to also be a gift back to him. And so therefore, this is our giving time, our offering time. And you should see on your screen, there are four ways to give. You can uh, mail it and you can see that address on the screen. Please do not mail cash. You can mail a check or a money order there. You can also text BFWC Give to that number 28748. And you can also go ahead and cash out uh, BFWC 1604, cash app 1604. And then you can also go online to believersfamily.org uh, and give online there. Believersfamily.org. 
uh, and give online there. You know, some of you, I'm going to tell y'all because you've been watching all the time, but you need to just go ahead and sow. You know, go ahead and give. Go ahead and just find that place because there's pleasure in giving. There is a pleasure, a joy in giving. So now that you have your seed or you might have gotten off to go ahead into one of those things to PayPal and you did it through all things, let's do our confession at this time. And we're going to say the Lord gives seed to the sower. So we thank you for the seed. He gives bread to the eater. We thank you for the bread. He multiplies our seed sown. Thank you for multiplication. We are the head and not the tail. We live above only and not beneath. We are the lender and not the borrower. Everything I put my hands to shall prosper. This, we, if you're in church, we would say, tell three people I receive a hundredfold. Receive a hundredfold. Receive a hundredfold. Receive a hundredfold. And then we say all together, I'm out of debt. All my needs are met. I have plenty more to see and to store. I bind lack. I bind poverty. I bind insufficiency. And I lose the supernatural abundance of God in my life now. The supernatural abundance of God in my life now. The supernatural abundance of God in my life now. And we thank you so much for being a part of the giving group at Believers Family Worship Center. Now, we only have a few announcements, and then we're going to close. And those, just remember that, you know, what you see on midweek uh, live nights on Wednesdays, uh, and we also in person at Believers Family Worship Center, 1604 East Dartmouth Doll Drive, New Iberia, Louisiana. We come every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. You ought to make your way into the place where we impart uh, the power of God is here and the presence of God is here and you can do that we also have prayer every monday through friday 6 a.m to 6 15 a.m that prayer call number is 339-209-6903 one more time 339-209-6903 i'm saying that because we had a group out in the world and said wanted to know that number so we wanted to make sure that we had that number uh 339-209-6903 monday 6 a.m to 6 15 a.m central time and then monday nights for one hour of prayer power at 7 p.m central time that same number 339-209-6903 well we thank you so much for being with us on tonight we just want to let you know that we're going to continue to be praying for you that that the prophetic power of the joy of the Lord will be activated. Now, you don't have to walk around and wondering if my word is going to come to pass. It shall come to pass. You want to know why? Because the joy of the Lord, you're going to have strength to go through your process and get what God has promised you. So as we close tonight, we're just going to just lift this up, this ironic blessing. And we're going to say, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. May his righteousness go before you and his glory be your rear guard. And it is in the name of Jesus we say amen. Have a blessed evening. It's been wonderful being with you. Love you.